Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, we are today uh, uh, together for one hour long with uh, Francesco Biviano, um, who is a co-founder and COO at Arcton, a very promising uh -huh. startup uh, headquartered in uh, Zurich. Hello, Francesco, how are you? Hi, hi, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I all it's good. a real I'm pleasure. You. Uh, perfect, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, it's, it's a good pleasure to have you because uh, what you do at Achton is very interesting and very promising and it opens a lot of possibility and a lot of doors for startup and also for investors. So we will dig dive, deep dive, um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss with you uh, very precisely. So we have a very intense program today. Um, so maybe before we start, maybe you, you could... Um, uh, can can you present yourself and sure. your background, also the one of Mirens, your your co-founder, and how yeah. did you met, and why did you did you focus on that subject uh, in particular? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I start with me and my co-founder. Myself, uh, I'm Italian. I moved to Switzerland around six years six years and a half ago. Uh, I studied finance. I worked a couple of years as a data analyst for eBay and another company in Geneva, away in. Uh, in the corporate finance side and later on i did uh, certificates of advanced studies in blockchain at the university of geneva so to learn how to put my hands on the tech program smart contracts and so, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you because I, I, as i also uh, re, uh watch many of your, in, your previous interview i just want to understand why would you were interested by the crypto and the blockchain world and why did you get this certificate i, I i'm I want another yeah. one, another subject. Why this particular subject? Uh, but I, I mean, it was so I started following the crypto space since 2018 when I was still at university back then. Um, and it was at the beginning, it was just out of interest. There was a course at the University of Lausanne, and I just took it. And actually, my professor was Adrian Treccani, who is now the founder, who is the founder of Metaco. Maybe you heard uh, they sold the company uh for to ripple for 250 million just recently this year so he was actually my professor he got me into the topic uh, and later on i started exploring it myself and i was always really fascinated um a lot by blockchain because it's a multi uh discipline i feel it is a multi-discipline disciplinary oh, such a complicated word uh multidisciplinary uh subject so it's not like ai where it's it, it can be applied to many um domain but i feel like um blockchain it's really uh multidisciplinary you can have apply to many more domains and um so that's why i was really interested i was especially interested about with the intersection with the financial sectors and uh, yeah, that's where I, I decided like uh, it was a new thing, exciting, uh, and I wanted to deep dive into it. Mm, perfect. And and then uh, how did you meet uh, Marines and how did you brainstorm about the, the, the type of startup? Because you could have done, as you said, many other things with blockchain and the technology and, and why this particular uh, uh, positioning for Arcton? We will talk about Arcton, of course, in, in detail, but... Uh, I'm always interested, you know, about the the, the T zero of of of, of, an, of an of an adventure adventure. Sure. So what wh how we met? We met at an event uh, when I was still doing my certificates of advanced studies. He he has a, so he has a background as a lawyer. So he uh, is from St. Gallen. He so he's, he's Swiss. He, he did um, yeah all his studies in uh, in, uh, in law, and then he became a lawyer. And he worked as a capital market lawyer for Baker McKenzie. So he works on this IPO, really company going public. And then he became a research assistant at the University of Geneva, uh, sorry, University of Zurich. And the professor asked him, hey, you should write a paper in your PhD on tokenized shares because that was the new thing. Uh, it was a new law that came, uh, they basically was enacted by the government, Swiss government two years and a half ago. So he did a whole PhD on, on tokenization and digital assets. And basically what, what he was looking at, what, why would someone do it? Why would someone tokenize? Why does it make sense? Um, on my side, I was interested in the tokenization of real estate at the time. Uh, but then we brainstormed and we realized that it, it was a much better idea to go, uh, as he suggested, to go into the tokenization of 
of startup shares mm-hmm. or companies, which is easier uh, because exactly you could t- you can tokenize any securities, but you cannot tokenize directly a piece of real estate. I mean, you need to tokenize if you want the company that owns a piece of real estate, but you cannot do it directly real estate. So that's why we went for the equity. We thought it was interesting because it needed to be, uh, I mean, investing in private, not not public equity. So that's what I want to make sure we are. There is no interest from our side into public equity because these are already tradable, mm. already available to everyone. What is not available and it's hard is to get into private companies, right? Mm. Uh, then there's so many. Most of the companies are private, and uh, and and that's where we found. Okay, there will be uh, there is a there is a potential there is an opportunity because if we can create a market for these uh, um, a market for for the tokenized shares of these companies, then we can really disrupt how crowdfunding has been done. Mm-hmm. And with with the help of DeFi and all the new technology that came out of it and this new law, we could really make it happen. We can make it happen. It makes sense, of course, because uh, the private company is huge. Is uh, it's um, We all hear about you know the listed company on, on the classic stock, stock exchange, but of course, uh, the hidden part of the iceberg is the privately held startups and company and SMEs, and et cetera. They are huge, 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 huge. And of course, they, are, they need money also. They, they need investors, and and yeah. uh, but they are, they are privately held, as you said, uh, company so uh, it, exactly. it makes a lot of sense you know to to help them to 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 offer um liquid um, shares and of course mm-hmm. a, a dynamic exchange also because it, we will talk about this point very because it's yeah. very important uh, um so you decided to mm-hmm. create Arcton that is um exactly marketplace uh, a crowd uh, an equity based crowdfunding platform exactly with the leverage of um tokenization of startup shares Plus exactly. an exchange uh, external that is cannot. We'll talk about yeah, this. Exactly. So this exactly. is the positioning of Arten, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That uh, you you summarize perfectly. Arten is just a crowdfunding platform, equity crowdfunding platform, uh, where the only difference is that we tokenize the equity that uh, of the startup that raise funds on us, and then we have a partnership with a. Uh, it's called a decentralized exchange. Maybe we can go more into it, which we partnered for actually doing the secondary market. Mm. And this is a, the, the interesting part is that you can have a continuous uh, secondary market uh, 20, open 24 seven. So yeah, Fantastic. that's, um, yeah. So now, uh, okay, now we have position. What, what is exactly uh, Acton? Uh, we will talk about, uh, because it's a, it's a, it's a B-face. Uh, um, uh, B to B to B, uh, you know, uh, no, not exactly. Yeah, it's it's, it's a marketplace. Yeah. So exactly, you need a you need a, it's a, normally it's called marketplace because exactly you need investors on one side or retail investors, people that wants to invest, and then you need the companies or the startups that wants to raise so funds. Let's yeah. let's talk about each phase of the of the marketplace. We will start yeah. with the startup size. Um, uh, what 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 are what are the type of startups are you looking for? Are you accepting to onboard on actions? Are you uh, technology specific? Uh, are you or agnostic? Uh, what type of application are you seeking? Are you once again mm-hmm. are you agnostic? What development stage also very important? Pre seed yeah. uh, from idea to MVP or seed incorporated post exactly pre uh, pre A post serie A and geography? What is the geography? Are you focusing? For your startups. Yeah, absolutely. So um, regarding the startup, so we are, so the type first, the first, the kind of startups that uh, we are, we target and is allowed on um, is pretty much any startup who is not actually a crypto startup or that has what I mean, crypto startup, it has its own token. So if these, if a startup has already its own token, not tokenized, I'm just saying a utility token, because there is a distinction between a, a security token and a utility token, mm-hmm. then is not suitable for us because then there is this dual listing of like you have a token and then you have a security token. So actually, crypto startup who are who want to issue their own token, they are not suitable for us. 
On the other side, we have all the other startups or how we call it web two startups, which can be in any space, FinTech, MedTech, uh, really anything, AI, whatever, that just won't would like to talk, that they are not planning to, to issue any token because it's not that every startup will issue their own token. Mm. Then what we can just do is to tokenize their equity and just make it easier for people to to uh, to buy it and to trade it afterwards. So I would say that, so we are like agnostic on the kind of uh, industry, mm -hmm. anything, anything that our community is interested, in, they are mostly interested into AI, FinTech, blockchain as well even though as, as i said they don't need they, they don't have they are not planning to issue any token but they want to tokenize their equity and uh health tech so these are the the the, the segment which our community is more interested uh about but of course we are open because um, um okay. to any other segment i asked the question because uh Usually, uh, as you are uh, deeply connected to the fintech ecosystem in, Zur in Zurich, uh, incubator, yeah. accelerator, and 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 top uh, top uh, uh, teaching uh, university, etc. All of this, I, I at first I thought that you were only helping, you know, digital startup in the field of crypto, in the field of blockchain, you know, to you know, you know, it's a kind of um, uh, in yep. internal thing that uh, working together. But exactly. you, but I see on your platform that you are also working for uh, uh, supporting a startup that has developed an exoskeleton that is a, a physical uh, product. You know exactly. Okay. So actually, it's that's that's what is important for us. So we are open like to work with uh, any you know Web two startup or in any pretty much segment which has a community exactly uh, hopefully it has a community of course it helps if the startup is a b2c a little bit of a b2c oriented startup because it's just the nature of crowdfunding you know since you are mm. uh, you you want retail investor to invest if you are doing a very uh, abstract thing like a banking software where people mm. have a hard time maybe to relate is a b2b business um people have a hard time then it's a bit harder to sell. But mm -hmm. I mean, not that it's not possible, it's just that it's a bit harder, you know, the B2B businesses. So B2C business are more suitable for crowdfunding. Also, that has to be said. And uh, yeah, no, no, the, 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 the stage, <laughs> sorry, the, sta the, the stage of development. So in order to ensure that we have uh, a, le uh, so, I mean, I can go later into the world the diligence process, but the, the the startup that we accept, they need to be incorporated. Mm -hmm. They need to be raising a seed round or a Serie A. Okay. So, family, friends, uh, pre-seed round, we we are not interested. Uh, uh, so, and we try to look for startup who are a bit more advanced, still early stage, but a bit more advanced. We cannot take the risk to really list anything that comes up to us just uh maybe um you know so someone with an mvp or with an idea we need product market fit we need a little bit of revenue potentially we need uh to see that um yeah some some fit I'm otherwise sure. uh, uh, it's too risky it's too risky mm -hmm. yeah very interesting um so let's let's continue with the startup size maybe uh so uh, of course uh, it's a, it's a classic question people ask you uh, how do you source your startup uh, do you uh, do you uh, launch ads online calling out startup to onboard or, or, or do you participate in demo days uh, or do you scan mm -hmm. the web yeah. how, how is your your process to 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 find startup and and bring them on board so we so we we ourselves so exactly uh, it's mostly network connections so yeah, it's really hard to do um, ads online for this kind of business. While you can do it for retail investors to raise awareness about your platform, for sourcing startup at this stage, at least we that's we do, we just go through our network. So we are incubated at Tenity. Tenity is the biggest fintech incubator in Switzerland, and thanks to them, we get access to a really a lot of interesting deal. Uh, we get to know uh, a lot of startups that pass through the incubation program. Some of them are early stage. Some of them are still early, but a bit more advanced. So we already get to see uh, really interesting startups. Then uh, we do, we often go to events uh, um, in, in Zurich around. You know, there is the 
uh, Zurich University AI Center. Uh, there are, the, I mean, there is the Startup Night. Uh, all these events and all these um, eco smaller ecosystem, we try to, you know, we create connections with them in order to get to know where are the startup, which are the ones, which are the startup raising funds. But honestly, it's most through connection. I'm very connect. I've been connected to the EPFL, the one in Lausanne, because I studied there. Therefore, I still have connection there. My co-founder has done a uh, study. I studied at the University of Zurich, so we have connection there. We just go to demo days, as you mm -hmm. said. Uh, so it's mostly network how we source uh, and we look for startup. And also, we we check on LinkedIn sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, what's going on, and we check some uh, some. Uh, some uh, you know in startup that went through inno swiss or venture mm -hmm. or kickstarter um you know this this startup in switzerland so another thing is as of today we are only looking for swiss based mm. startups sure because um, of because of the legal constraint that we have with our business uh, yeah. related to the bill right for the tokenization or yeah it's for the tokenization because uh, i mean the swiss tokenized tokenization law applies only to Swiss based startup. Mm. So if they are outside uh, Switzerland, we cannot apply the same legal base that um, it's in Switzerland, we have in Switzerland. I will, of course, I will ask you to explain a little bit more this, this bill because it's fascinating and, and we hope uh, that it will be copied and passed in all Europe because it's very, very powerful. Um, yeah. Concerning uh, the startup, once again, um, how many startups you want to what is your what is your policy you want to to have the maximum startup on your platform and let let you know the the crowd uh, investors to decide or do you want to have to kind of uh, deal flow you know one by one after one and pushing one until the race fundraising is, is done and putting another one or what is your policy uh, for the startup fundraising process yeah, at the moment is more as the second one you described. So we do one at a time. We need to grow our community. We did the first fundraiser uh, in uh, in November for a startup based in Geneva, and now exactly we are sourcing the all for the next startups. At the moment, we are planning to do one by one case to really validate uh, the interest, uh, grow the community, validate uh, our um, yeah have a product market fit. You know, so. At the moment, is really one by one case. Uh, later on, uh, our vision is to um, clearly have uh, more startup, probably even expanding to other different asset classes if our community find it interesting. And later on, is to develop our own secondary market. Yes, mm. this is so, very interesting because uh, we will talk about the secondary market strategy also that you choose, and you are telling me that mm -hmm. you want to develop your own secondary market. It's very interesting to see the the, the articulation. But a little bit later, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we'll talk about uh, that. And so let's talk about maybe a little bit about the due di the due diligence. Uh, how you do? You talk about the. the stage and location the uh, uh, the stage uh, yeah. starter and their location and uh well and then do you have a very formal due diligence or do you re do you uh, rely on what the incubator the accelerator have already performed it and you you just uh, let them come in no we we have quite of a, a rule based strict due diligence on startups so i mean at the beginning it's just you know they they reach out to us they send a pitch deck and we see if it can be of any interest then we start to circle this inside our community to test if there is any interest as well if it's something once we see that okay it's something that could be interesting then we start the actual due diligence mm. then there we actually look into the documents so we ask the incorporation document we ask them for the shareholder agreement their status we look at all this legal side so we take a look of all the legal side then more on the business side, we look at, uh, so we ask, uh, we want to see the team, uh, their business model, their competition and the market opportunity. Mm -hmm. So these, and these, but also Tenity helps us into this evaluation. So this evaluation, there is also Tenity involved. On the legal side, we take care of that. We make sure that the startup is, uh, doesn't have, uh, I don't know, overhanging debts or mm -hmm. things like this, right? This is like, we do it ourselves. On the business side, we, we do we do a check ourselves. Tenity helps us into evaluating whether it's a good startup. And then once it goes all these checkboxes has been uh, passed, then we say, okay, there is enough interest in our community, let, then let's do the fundraise. 
perfect, perfect. Um, and uh, maybe a last point on, on this subject is the is the pre-money valuation uh, because there are yeah. exactly. seed startups, so it's very difficult to you know to put a number on on the startup because it's it's very important to for the yeah. IPO and to put a price on the shares. You are you are you are putting exactly. So Absolutely. How Absolutely. do you make the the valuation? Is it um, do you have a, I don't know connection with the laboratory or in, in corporate finance with your universities who can help you, you know to, to dig into the database of comparable? Uh, what is your method? Yeah, it's really I mean uh, so <laughs> the thing is that. Uh, how we do it so we, we we don't make up the valuation not ourselves so it's the startup actually proposing their valuation mm -hmm. based on the money that they've raised before and then based on the revenue or the status as of mm -hmm. today of course then then at the end the decision it's our decision whether this deal goes onto the platform so if we see that the valuation in our opinion and according to our community doesn't sounds fair yeah, yeah. or doesn't make mm. sense then we are just not going to list them mm. if they come up with a crazy valuation where we say we're worth 20 billion uh 20 million or mm. and we are a pre-seed whatever this is most likely them okay it's up to you but we are not going to list you so for us it's like they, they have to come up with the valuation that is reasonable as long which is reasonable and our community understands then we are happy to list it. But of course, if there is valuation, doesn't sound any, uh, yeah. there, there's no any business logic, then we just don't, we cannot list them. So Very it's really to, to, to work in with the collective intelligence of your community, you know, to, yeah. to, to evaluate if, if, the, if the pricing is correct, yeah. because uh, they, are, they are very early stage startups. So we don't know. Uh, we, we, yeah. we expect they become very, uh, very valuable in the future, but at the moment they want to raise one. We don't know exactly the price. Uh, and it, I can make a point. It's quite interesting that so with our last startup that we fundraised, so they had they were raising um, a seed round or a, uh, they already raised a million and a half in the past. So now they were looking to raise more money, and they they were already making revenue. So eight. 80,000 Swiss franc a year. So they were already making some good revenue and they proposed a valuation of 5 million, which is really fair. And so we, we really passed the deal to our community. We have a Discord community where our community hangs out and talk about it. We opened up a channel with them. And then really the feedback from our community was like, it's actually quite cheap, like as a valuation. I mean, we have a, also a very Web3 based community at the moment. We're looking also to shift more toward the focus web to web three users. But so for our community, this deal sounds very fair. Uh, so we really listened to the community as well. Mm. And uh, they said that valuation seems fair. And yeah, then, and we, we felt comfortable. It was, but also the response from our community was that was so. Perfect, perfect. And of course, when, when a startup uh, do some revenue, it's the calculation is more easy because there are formula, yeah, exactly. formula for that. But the, the problem is always go to our in and uh, you know they, they don't have yeah. cash flow. If they, they they may have some traction in any way, users or like or whatever, but they don't have revenue. So in in, in yeah. terms of uh, corporate finance, it's more difficult to, to put a price on them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. So now let's. Uh, Please, things like I'm five years old because you know tokenization, crypto is it's a it's a real new world for many people, including technologists uh, who are not mm -hmm. in the field. You know, so what um, can you expect? What exactly the tokenization of share is, um, uh, and what is the content? You know, of this famous uh, smart contract that you are offering to the public. Sure. So. It actually, is, so tokenization is just a fancy term to say representation of a financial asset or or, or of any security on blockchain. Mm -hmm. That's all, that's all it is. So if I want to represent something that is an equity, a bond, a, any derivative, honestly, any securities, and we put it on chain, so we represent it on chain, or we create our digital a digital representation, then this is tokenization. Mm -hmm. So, so at simple as this. person could say, so what's the difference between a paper share and an 
and the e-paper share, you know, the, the in the web too. So what what makes the yeah. specificity of being in a, into a block chain, uh, uh, particularly for a legal document such as a share, because it's a, it's a proof of ownership. So is is the yeah. proof of ownership kept into the into the work blockchain? Yeah, I mean, uh, so the proof of ownerships it gets transferred exactly when you transfer the token. Mm -hmm. So if I if I have some shares on my wallet and I transfer to you, then you become the actual owner of these shares, mm -hmm. and there is no need for any signatures. And you lost. So it. now and you lost it. Because uh, well, I mean, no, if I send it to you, then yes. I can copy yes. and pass the document. I have accepted and then send it to you. You know, you, there, there are a copy of the document. This, this is what we call a. Uh, uh, you know, a digital. This is the principle of Web two. You know, we can copy and pass digital uh, document, yep. but not with yeah, the, exactly. well, not with the, the not with the token. Mm. So yes, exactly. If, if, if I remember when I had to uh, when I when one of my previous there was a person that we sold back the shares to us who was in the company before. It was a nightmare. This person was in France, and basically to sell us back his shares, the, we were these were not tokenized shares. Basically, we had to send him a document. He had to sign it physically and then send it back to us. So it, it could not even be a digital signature, like you know, I sign it digitally. Mm. It couldn't even. It needed to be handwritten signature. So basically, a paper going to Paris and coming back by post. So to actually certify the sale of these shares. Mm. Well, if these if these are tokenized, he could have just. Basically, you sign the paper and all. I mean, the paper is just a formality, let's say. But then the actual ownership transfer happens when he actually sends the shares to my wallet. Mm. This is very That's different. already. Uh, yeah. So... Um... So the 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 yeah. token yeah. share is legally the same than a paper share. Of course, you you, you it's exactly yeah. and um, is a token share the same thing as an NFT? Is it two 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 uh, same two? Is it the same concept and two different with two different name? Um, so I would say no. So so exactly. Maybe I can go into more. To the, this is the more technical part. So. What is this exactly the question you ask? Which smart contract is behind these tokenized shares, right? Um, so uh, our shares are ERC20 tokens. So ERC20 tokens are any token that you that you, that, that, that it's fungible that is um, that is fungible on um, on on the blockchain, like any crypto tokens. Uh, mostly, uh, almost all of them are ERC20. Mean, most of them are on the Ethereum blockchain are ERC20 token. So these token are fungible, are, are exchangeable. Mm. And we use the same standard. So, I mean, just to say, uh, you know, Uniswap token is an ERC20 token. We use exactly the same uh, uh, standard token. It's a bit tweaked. Is of course, the smart contract is a bit different. There are a couple of differences because those are securities. These are securities. Mm -hmm. So it's not actually safe, but Anyway, it's completely compatible with any DeFi infrastructure, our token. So it can be used in a DAX, it can be used in a lending and borrowing protocol, all that. Uh, so this said, what is the difference with an NFT? An NFT um, first is another kind of smart contract, is an RC721, uh, RC mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And uh, and the NFT, the purpose of an NFT is normally that is not fungible. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, it, it's for representing something. While here, we actually tokenize every token with our system represent one share. Mm -hmm. So other and these are exactly the same. While if you talk, if you do an NFT of every share, then every one of them is different and they are not fungible. While mm -hmm. one share. One share that I send you, it should be the same share that you have mm. potentially you send me. They cannot be different. I mean, uh, otherwise, I mean, you could say different asset classes, but let's let's keep it simple. No, no, it's um, great because I, I I was wondering because as you uh, connect the name or, or the or the or the, um, the code, you know, of the owner of the token as share with the share he buy, you know, I, I thought that um, if John 
owns a token ISF from Zuper Startup is not uh, fungible or is it, or is fungible with uh, the same share owned by Robert, you know, from the same startup. Exactly. Mm. These are fungible. Exactly. Okay. That's the purpose. Because because there is a smart contract that mints them all mm. at once. So then all these tokens are are the same, basically. Uh, they are really the same and they are completely fungible. Mm. And that's why you don't want uh, uh, an NFT. Then there are other protocols who uh, actually mm, actually use NFT for the representation mm -hmm. of this. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it's a different structure, but they just use it as a representation. Basically, it's like a certification that you are entitled of this ownership, mm -hmm. but it's not really, uh, there is not a real, um, it's just a representation, basically, like a certification that these shares is somewhere and you are the owner. This is how an NFT as of today is, is used into this uh, context. But otherwise, you want to have an ERC twenty mm. token. It would be or something that is fungible. It would be um, too much level of ownership if if you have tokenized the share into an NFT, right? It was was too too restrict yeah. to do anything then with them. Yeah, it would be now. It would be completely messy. But but, but just think, let's think about it. If I if I if I uh, so uh, let's say I have ten thousand uh, hundred thousand shares. Then I will have uh, hundred thousand different tokens. Mm -hmm. So let's say in my wallet I'm gonna purchase twenty thousand. Means I'm gonna have twenty thousand different NFTs mm -hmm. in my wallet. That doesn't make any Very sense. Very interesting because uh, then the the liquidity will be completely uh, this. Uh, yeah, this exactly. Mm -hmm. It will be it will be it will be a mess to work with. I mean, there are some decks for NFTs. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm not. I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert on. And I mean, Dex. I know how they work very well for mm. uh, fungible tokens. For NFTs, uh, 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 yeah, I will. I need mm. to check. But yeah, it will be very complicated from the liquidity side. It will really not work. Okay, uh, I understand why I why I ask this question because you know people who defend the NFT are very pushing about the ownership and you know. Uh, it's yours and the, what 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 it's in the nft is unique and it and you, it can be anywhere else. yeah but you, you don't need that for tokenized no share. no no i mean i i understand because what, what what these people when they talk about nft what they are referring is that exactly that mm -hmm. when you mint an nft is unique yeah. it's unique on its own and that's what people like because it represents something a digital something or whatever mm. which is unique and people want this uniqueness mm. but when you're talking about shares mm. uh, this, is, this is not doesn't make any sense you don't want uniqueness you want to that if you have some shares mm. and i have something these are exchangeable they are one to one mm. that if i send you one shares and you send me one share this is a sec mm. the same thing uh, you do you, we don't want like to have two different bitcoins mm. like two different classes of bitcoin if i send you a bitcoin then you have a bitcoin and if you send me one it's, mm. it's exactly the same right thanks for this clarification it's, it was very insightful for me it was a real question you know it was not uh i didn't try to you know to to it, it, I, I really asked myself this this question be preparing this interview what would be the difference yeah. uh, uh with the nft and the, the, the token i share and now yeah. practically uh, technically how do you tokenize is there a software when you i don't know you put you know the paper shell inside and and at the and the outcome is a tokenized things uh, how, did, how does it work so there is a legal part and there is a technical mm. part uh, uh the legal part it's uh it's basically uh we, we the company needs to have in its status of the company mm. uh modification which says that its shares can be basically tokenize it that we, we it's not exactly written like this but you need to add this to the status of the company so you need to go to the notary make a modification mm -hmm. so that they their shares can be uh, represented in a, a tokenized form and then once we do this then we uh, arcton we have the smart contract and we basically mint these shares so then you, you, how does it work a smart contract is a set of, of functions then we just specify, so we just write this function is the name of the company, the ticker, how many shares we need to mint. And then once all these criteria has been uh, filled, then we just 
deploy the smart contract on on Arbitrum, the blockchain where which we work with, and this uh, and then these shares where we decide where they are sent to a wallet, which is controlled by is a multi sig wallet, which is controlled by the startup, mm -hmm. the notary, and us as, as set ours, and then these shares are in the in the in this uh, multi sig wallet, and then they can be sent, and then people can purchase. So it's um, yeah. if I can ask uh, request something, maybe you should one day uh, uh, make a demo. You know, just uh, share your screen and and record it and say this is how maybe, you yes. organize anything. In fact, because it could be yeah shared. yeah yeah exactly because this is magic, this is you know, exactly it's like is, is the create it's very simple and it, 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 this tokenization is as is the same thing as creating any token at the end of the day. Then there are. Of course, here there is the legal part which we have in Switzerland, but the creation of the token itself is really the same as the creation of any ERC20 token. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's fairly easy and simple. And if you just type on Google how to create ERC20 token, you basically watch okay. the first video. And you will see how. I will find how video to, to to add in on the on the on the blogs on the blog article. Yeah, yeah it's, I, it's a good. You gave me a good input that I I, I will uh, exactly I will do some live test mm -hmm. to show exactly people because uh, if someone exactly has never deployed a smart contract, uh, it's it might seem very abstract. All mm -hmm. this, it's true. Uh, good point. Maybe we can uh, talk about the, the the IPO now by, by itself. So you have tokenized the shares, etc. Of yeah. course, you have discussed uh, with your with your community before uh, to for the startup, and now you, the shares, the, the tokenized shares are available um, for the for the buyers, investors. Yeah. Uh, first question: uh, Why did you call that on your website IPO and not security token offering? Is it? Just That's you don't want to use uh, mumbo jumbo jargon of crypto world, or, or is it the, or is it very different things for you? Actually, it's very interesting. It was a big, big debate, uh, quotation mark, big debate on how to call this. Right? I always thought that security tokens uh, offering was uh, made more sense, mm -hmm. um, but then somehow our community started calling that when we were explaining what we were doing or we you know people read our documents and whatever they started calling it startup ipo for them and at the end we basically you know our community started giving these even if to me made more sense mm -hmm. security token offering somehow our community uh, liked more the startup ipo um terminology and so at the end we just kept this but it's exactly the same okay. uh because the reason why this they said that security token offering the, they didn't like it our community because in the past there were some scams mm. or people that misappropriated this term mm -hmm. saying oh this is a security token but in reality it was not and in 2018 and 19 there was a big buzz around this and people were saying oh this is i'm issuing a security token but like Switzerland was the first country to have a legal framework to do it, and it was only in 2021. So people, when thought about STO, thought about, ah, but this is like a scammy thing. So they prefer like a new name like this, Startup IPO. And basically, we went on with this name since our community liked it. That's uh, good. good uh, yeah. It's a smart, uh, smart choice because, of course, ICO is, forget it, it's full of exactly. 70% of ICO scam. Then we, we saw the terminology of STO, security token offering. Uh, but as it's, it's a jargon of the crypto world, maybe yeah. a wider maybe. investor could be, you know, uh, could be could be a barrier to entry for wider people, you know, not, not very good. Yeah, exactly. IPO maybe it's, it's actually it's good. It's, you're making a good point that uh, um, to a wider audience, even the word token is very scary. Mm -hmm. Somehow people get scared when they hear the word token. Mm -hmm. So honestly, we liked startup IPO. Mm -hmm. um, as of so far, we, we yeah, I think we uh, we like it. And it's, it's also good to kind of mint uh, or uh, create a new uh, name for this, uh, for, for this kind of mm -hmm. service uh, to have our own name. It's quite, quite cool. <laughs> but yeah, let's see. Um, so in the, in the old, old new world, you know, uh, based on fiat money, 
we saw the emergence of many crowdfunding platforms trying to disrupt the old world of project of uh, project financing. First, we saw the emergence of donation reward crowdfunding platform who creative projects such as books, movie, uh, craft uh, uh, to go to consume our product. And the, the two or three major platforms are Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and, and Ulul in France. Uh, then we yep. the emergence of investment crowdfunding platform, equity-based crowdfunding, royalty-based crowdfunding, peer-to-peer -peer lending. Exactly. So uh, just to, re to remind to our audience that Arten is therefore an equity-based crowdfunding, crowd investing platform mm -hmm. with the secret sauce, uh, with the leverage uh, offered by the Web3 uh, crowd. And of course, the tokenization uh, of shares, and this tokenization is uh, a legal, uh, the legal process done by you, and is, mm -hmm. is is based on the opportunity that law has been um, has been approved in Switzerland. Uh, that is uh, opening a lot of opportunity. Maybe you could a little bit talk yeah. about this law for us. Yes. Uh, so the the process is worse is exactly worse as a traditional capital inc let's say that we want to create tokenize just the new shares that a company uh, creates so the process is exactly as it was before so you go to the notary you do the capital increase and then basically um and then basically at the same time you mint the tokens and we can attach this document so the document of the the, the notary is signed mm -hmm. with the capital increase uh, uh, we we put in IPFS and then we create a link and we put it in the token so people can always refer to the real document and see that actually this uh, this is not just a whatever token it's a token which was there was a signature of a of a notary of a Swiss notary and there was an actual capital increase and these are actually security tokens. Um, and yeah, basically. What is the name and then of the law? Sorry, what is the name of the of the of the law uh, regulate? Uh, the the, the, the name the name of the law is the Swiss DLT Swiss DLT. bill. Okay, very or important. Swiss DLT uh, Swiss DLT Act. Mm. Yeah, Swiss DLT bill. Very important. Uh, yeah, you can you can check it out. Absolutely. It's it it came into force in February 2021. And then there was the second part of this uh, framework, which uh, so the first part came into force February 2021. The second part was in August 2021 with some new licenses for trading facilities. Yeah, but yeah, the full so came in there. The Something time. very intrigued that intrigued me a lot about uh, you know the Web3 is the, the the dynamic and the power of the of this of the crowd of the Web3 crowd. Why the Web3 crowd are so dynamic, so powerful? Where the web t where, where the web two crowd are not because when you compare the money raised yeah. on the web two is crazy, and the record with the you know with the crowdfunding platform I I, I sit and click after etc. They have some some record of fundraising you know that can raise um, reach ten million dollar uh, something like that, but compared to the what the the web three uh, records. Of fundraising have yeah. been performed. It's crazy. How do you explain this difference? Yeah, I would say so. It's really, it's really good question, an interesting question. Like that's why uh, with our community, we went after looking people in the Web three because Web three users have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They like to invest. They like to trade. They're risk takers. But the reason why I think is there's uh, people. But to, like frankly, the easy answer is. People have a lot of money in our not have made a lot of money. Mm. Crypto user made a lot of money, and that's what gives them a lot of uh, a lot of power for investing. These people, uh, a lot of people made a lot of money, and uh, I mean you can go on D Bank and check it out. Some of the wallets out there, mm -hmm. and these people um, have uh, have made a lot of money with because tokens are tradable. Since the beginning, it's like, you know, the, so let's put it this way. You know, hedge funds, mm -hmm. right? You heard these guys make a lot of money. Why do they make a lot? Of, I mean, not all of them. I'm, I'm just, now I'm generalizing, but they make a lot of money because they can trade. They can create strategies, right? They can short. They can go long. They can do any fancy thing because shares at that stage uh, on the public market, they are tradable, right? Mm -hmm. 
And and so hedge funds may, mainly trade things who are liquid and tradable. Well, now mm-hmm. you, that world was really not easy accessible for retail users. And also, even though it was accessible, you had a competitive disadvantage. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have the same quality of information and possibility to have the same quality of, as an edge fund Absolutely. because you're not going to have a you're not going to have a Thomas a Bloomberg terminal. Mm-hmm. There is no way you're going to be like earlier on something onto something mm. before them so then in crypto is actually different it, it works completely with other system you, things are tradable since the beginning mm-hmm. you don't need a fancy access the, there are no gatekeepers because mm. even to 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 even to purchase stocks it's not that you can buy them with a, with a wallet you there are gatekeepers you need a bank you need a primer broker you don't you you, you cannot even access the stock exchange no one i mean you need to you need permissions to access the stock exchange well here that's the beauty of blockchain people can do whatever they want there is no there is no gatekeeper mm. people can trade on decentralized exchanges all day long no one is stopping them they have liquidity since the beginning so they can speculate and many people made a lot of money. That's why now they have a lot of power. So uh, if, you, if they try to sensitize why the crowdfunding platform in the Web2 world works, but not compared to, to, to Web3, to what is, in Web3, they have uh, the Web2 crowdfunding have the collective intelligence. OK, you will be have it into the Web3, but we multiply this by 1,000, 1, 1 million people more. So the collective intelligence yeah. is, is, is craziness. You now people, as you yeah. said, you, your your community co- evaluate a startup, you know, together and 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 this exchange. And this is this is uh, fascinating. It's like having um, an army of analysts at your at your service, you know, who work together yeah. and and work it and, and find the best decision. And also the 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 speculative part, the trading part of the of the of the things. That we can't find in the web too. When you when you exactly. support a, cre- uh, a creative guy on Kickstarter, okay, you may have a, a product, pr- promise of the product, or, or you have a, a reward, but it's not tradable. You know, it's okay. No. And same thing for the equity based after uh, equity based. Same, uh, same thing for the equity. You buy You're it. gonna be stuck there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you have the stock. You you can't do it, anything with it. You cannot you cannot do anything. You cannot stake it. You cannot put it as a collateral for lending and borrowing. You cannot really you can they, these stocks they don't generate any yield as they call it or any APY as they call it in the blockchain space. While well, there, so when you invest in a token, so already this can go up in price, but then you can do so many things. You can stake it. You can put it in a col- in a lending and borrowing in a market and uh, market uh, uh, in a lending and borrowing protocol. You can do all sort of things uh, to generate additional yields on this token. While we, if you invest in the Web two crowdfunding, I mean, you you don't you don't hold it. You don't you cannot trade it. Mm-hmm. You cannot you really cannot do anything, as you said. And and then you're just hoping at some point that in seven eight years this company gets sold. And maybe you make some money, Absolutely. hopefully mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. That's all. So, I mean, if this could be, I mean, I, mean, I, I really see how, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I mean, at least I'm convinced how mm. we can have the same thing also with equity. I hope uh, we will make it a big reality and a big shift because then we can have the same thing for Web2, Web3 investors who invest in equity of startups mm. and have the same, because this can be done it's really it's not a technological problem like it's not at all a technological challenge our challenge is not a technology stand is that shift of mentality challenge that's our challenge the challenge is convincing people that this is actually a good idea mm. because we are we hear a lot of pushbacks from people say no 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 e- equity of startups should not be tradable this is wrong mm. this is not a good idea and I'm like, why? No, because uh, otherwise there is too much volatility. This is not good for the ecosystem. Then the founders get distracted and, and they're going to tell you so many mm-hmm. points which can be valid. But then you see on the other side what happens in Web3. And it, and it works perfectly. And I mean, it's really actually 
if you have equity is even much better it will be even much much healthier mm -hmm. because because at least you know if you buy a token in the web3 world these guys th they don't give any legal protection like if you buy a token you don't have legal protection if you buy a tokenized share at least you know you have legal protection Absolutely. so if the guy is is going to is going to run away and you can sue them while well, if you buy a token you cannot i mean you cannot do anything this is very important point maybe we can repeat it again uh yeah. what's what you do is to produce a legal tokenized share yeah so i repeat it yeah. Arten produce issue from their startups um legal tokenized shares that means yeah. that it has the same legal uh, value than a paper shares you know so uh, of course, the startup can can go bankruptcy uh, or can become a success. But yeah, of course, exactly. Of you. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Absolutely. That's exactly that. Exactly. Let me share my screen very rapidly because I want to to show you something. Um, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see the the upper uh, and then the, the 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 upper schema that I made uh, here. Uh, so yep. you issue a tokenized share, and individual investor can, of course, uh, buy it by by sending money. You know, okay. Yeah, many exactly. many equity based uh, crowdfunding uh, crowdfunding equity. platform in the web two have uh, an intermediate uh, company for each startups that call a holding company. In fact, it's a um, special vehicle uh, in for for the special. Special per vehicle, yeah. Special vehicle, uh, SP, uh, special purpose vehicle. Exactly. SPV, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and the 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 function of this uh, intermediate company is to pull all the individuals investor, mm -hmm. and so yeah. the startup Together. will have only one investor, the SVP. Exactly. So this yeah, is yeah, a, yeah. this is a good model because for the governance of the startup is good. They don't have to report to one thousand, one one hundred investor here. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, in in the yeah. schema I just made one investor, but in fact, if we are, we are in crowdfunding, we can have um, one thousand investors. So it's yeah. a little yeah. bit complicated. So what is your yeah. model? Right. And um, yeah, we actually use us so. A couple of things. So yeah, we use a we have we use a SPV exactly as well. Uh, we uh, I mean startup? so now yeah we have one SPV that we then uh, can basically segment. So yes, oh. for uh, there is one SPV for every startup. Yes, yeah. Wow. Okay. The yeah yeah there is one SPV for every startup, and I mean so for Swiss startup. The, I mean this the reason is that uh, um, so first exactly we need a way to somehow. Uh, bundle together these investors mm -hmm. we for if they are swiss based in startup we can use also a nom kind of a nominee structure so that simplify basically you collect you put co collectively all these users together and you say hey there is one representative ah, and okay. this one is the one is the one going on the cap table of the startup mm. the reason why we have this spv is also because at the moment um we, we would like to tokenize equity of startups who are not based in the in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So how do you do it? If you cannot use the Swiss law, then you, you create an SPV in Switzerland, you take the equity of these startups, you bring it onto Switzerland, and then you tokenize the SPV. So that's our way of tokenizing also international startups. Mm, smart. Mm. Yeah, very interesting because I, when in my in my in my uh, drawing, you know, you see that there there are, there are two uh, shares issuing first for the startup and then from the SV to the investors. So you have two uh, you have to to issue two 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 times. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean the the part of like the the startup putting these shares in the SPV, it's fairly simple. is 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 a very basic pro. But, I mean, it's very simple. That side is just a legal documentation part. While well, then you actually then you sell what is uh, the shares of the SPV actually yes, which owns these shares. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, issue uh, tokenized shares. You make a call to our community. What type of of, of course, uh, what is the particularity also of the Web three is that people are behind the wallet, so they are anonymous. So you don't know exactly if if, if Mr. it's uh, Mr. Robert Smith and 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 Michel yeah. uh, Michel uh, Michel uh, Jonas, you know, you don't know the name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you like... have um, some 
element to, to know who are your, your investors. Are they individuals or are they hedge funds who are coming, you know, yeah. trying to, 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 to make money? Do you know what the type of, of your investors? Yeah, so on Arcton, on the primary issuance, we actually do a KYC. So we know, so when the startup actually do the fund, does the fundraise, mm -hmm. we know who's buying this token. So we know exactly oh. who is. They need to pass a KYC. We have it in place. So people actually pass it. We have restriction on some countries like US cannot invest. Some countries at war, um, you know, they cannot invest. So that, that, that we know. Um, really, really? Once they are on the secondary market, we actually don't know. Of yet. course, so, but I'm 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 talking very uh, uh, focusing on the IPO on the initial uh, offering yeah. because it's very important also to to avoid money laundering, you no know, uh, terrorists or mafia, you know, exactly. putting their money into a startup behind a wallet, anonymous wallet. So you know who are they are. So if there is any problem, you can you can trace the justice can exactly. trace them and and okay. Yes, exactly. That's why we we we, we do the KYC. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, we are reaching uh, the, the end of the. Yeah. Do you have something uh, booked after? Uh, yeah, I mean, in ten minutes, uh, okay. uh, I will have. Uh, yeah. Okay, because past yeah, yeah, I, I want to have you. Uh, you know, uh, so maybe okay. I will squip a little bit about the IPO. You you say that the most the major of uh, what I wanted to know. Maybe a little bit about the secondary market. Why did you choose yeah. the Camelot? Um, so, yes, yes, please. Uh, sure. Uh, so maybe I can also go, why did we think that this makes sense? So actually, it's also, maybe I can give a view of why of tokenization, because there are many people doing a lot of project in tokenization and why I think um, what we are doing, it makes more sense than um, some other projects. Um, so first of all, is if you tokenize something that is already exists in the traditional world and you bring it on chain, you're solving the problem or a problem just for those who cannot buy it in the in the in the traditional world. Mm. Make an I'm gonna make an example to make it very easy. If I tokenize a public stock and I tokenize it, then okay, maybe. If I if I if I completely I no other way to purchase a, a token a, a public stock, then I can buy it in the on blockchain. But it's very unlikely that um, a person doesn't have access to Robinhood mm. or a bank where he can actually buy from there a public stock. Mm. So tokenizing some of these assets which has, are now being tokenized. In our opinion, doesn't make sense or doesn't bring that much value, because if you tokenize like a bond, unless someone cannot purchase a bond on the traditional market, and there are some cases, I'm not saying that there are not. There are some cases. There are some companies that I know that only can purchase via crypto because they don't have an IBAN. They only collect funds from uh, stable coins or crypto. And then they deploy, so they need uh, to get access to these uh, assets. They they need to be tokenized. But otherwise, I would say tokenization doesn't make that much sense. Mm -hmm. If you tokenize something that already exists, you bring it on chain. If it's something that it's a, so why? So now going back, why do we do what we do is because people are interested into crypto. Because I mean, people come on chain at least or to exchanges because they can buy crypto, um, yeah, or something that is not available in the traditional world. So the reason why we do what we do is because we can, we bring on chain or in this world something that is not available in the traditional world. Tokenize equity of startups which are tradable on a on Camelot. On a decentralized exchange, this it cannot be done in the Web two world. Mm -hmm. This is really cannot be done as efficiently mm -hmm. as it can be done in the Web three world. So that the only reason why we tokenize shares is that because we can interact with the DeFi ecosystem. Absolutely. Because there, mm -hmm. because there you can enhance liquidity. You can have better lending and borrowing markets, and that's where it becomes very very interesting. Because then you can have all these things, which really they are not feasible in the traditional world, 
and but they are they can be done in the in the web three world so that's why we tokenize things which are not accessible like equity of c- private companies and we make it tradable so we give access to something which is hard to get access and on top of this you make it tradable so then we went on to camelot we told them about our project and they, they really loved it and they thought well we have the perfect infrastructure for this and we are lo- we are happy to work with you we reached out to three different decentralized exchanges at the end we decided to work with camelot because they were the most eager to work with us we get to know them and basically then we ended up with them I, I did it was a long story no, but to explain uh, uh we have a little bit time i will i will try to speed up um so uh the power of an external uh, exchange such as Camelot is very evident because they bring uh, the volume of transaction the velocity yes, of exactly. transaction that a web 2 secondary market of others don't have can offer so this is uh, this is the game changing uh, point and also you said at the beginning of the interview that you are planning to to build your own secondary market uh why when you have Camelot why would you want to have it uh, so your own one Makes sense. So yeah, exactly. So camera, it's amazing because mm-hmm. I mean, these infrastructure are really worse. They are millions and millions of volumes every day. So at, at the moment, you just have crypto, but there is no other. I mean, beside legal constraints and mindset, there is no way. There is no restriction on having tokenized equity. Um, so why we want? I said that exactly. We want to have our secondary market in the future. So now we need to validate a, more our our our. Um, our system Mm -hmm. or that tokenized shares can be traded on Camelot. And at the moment, internally, we don't have the resources to develop our own secondary market. It will be, it will be too much complicated for us. It's more easier to partner with them. They have a community. They like what we're doing. Their incentive is that the trading fees, they earn these trading fees. Um, For us, it's perfect because we just want to validate our model Mm -hmm. later on. Once we have done a couple of issues, the part what we would like is uh is actually to capture the value of the trading fees on the secondary market wow. so that's mm. why we want to develop our own mm. because then mm. we can do the issue and on our own secondary market and people when they trade then we we capture the value from the trading mm-hmm. fees mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. this was one of my question how do you earn money uh because the, on the secondary market there is transaction fee and I wanted to say if you have some uh, some some uh, fee um, feedback, you know, or, or not, yeah. not at the moment. We Camelot, we don't. Mm-hmm. So that's why later on we we would like to develop our own secondary market. So, Hopefully, in collaboration with them. I mean, I, I don't see why we cannot include them in this project. So, uh, how do you? Uh, what is your revenue model right now? Do you do you charge fee a starter when they onboard? Do you charge investors? Exactly. On the IP? so it's at the, at the moment it's just a fundraising fee. So when the startup raises a certain amount of money, we take five okay. percent. At, at the moment, it's fairly simple. We have, we also have a um, then we have a carried interest mm-hmm. when the startup makes an exit. So we we act a little bit as a VC if mm-hmm. you want or a private private equity. Uh, fees structure mm-hmm. um yeah that's mainly later on is to exactly fees on the secondary market as well if you're, and that's where i think it's if you allow me maybe a last question and then i will let you uh, yeah uh what is the you. most important challenge for the for the following month and what do you expect to to get as a as a, as a key out uh, outcome uh, for your for from here yeah the, the the current challenge is uh having some uh, inst- more institutionalized investors that can lead rounds in startups mm. that we propose on our platform or that wants to bring startups mm-hmm. to Arcton. So that's that's the challenge. Now having some more professional business angels that like the possibility to make their investments liquid. And so they would like to bring along uh, maybe, you know, lead a round of a startup they would like to invest on Arcton and we act as co-investors mm-hmm. with them so they can enjoy liquidity on their investment. So this is right now the challenge. We have finding this side of the market with the lead investors, business angels that like to do this.
Yeah. Fantastic. So let's make a call out to to uh, uh, venture capitalists who are folk who are educated in the, in the in the blockchain and they want to commit in the blockchain. Let's uh, call out to angel investors who want to come and and discover a new a new world. Thank you, Francesco. It was a delight to have you today. Thanks for being. Well, thank so you very clear. much. Your explanation was crystal crystal clear. Uh, thank you very much for being my guest today. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you a lot for having me. Bye-bye, yeah. everyone.